Hey guys, Ronroy here, and today I'm going to talk how you can get richer at the league start and early game with Blight mechanics. Blight mechanics were pretty popular for some time, and even right now in 323 Affliction you can still receive a lot of currency from it. I also think it will be pretty much good in the next expansions as well. Blight was pretty favorable for me this league and helped me a lot with receiving a lot of currency for my mage blood and for additional items as well. In this guide I'm going to showcase how you can get blight maps, how you can anoint them for good profit, how you can run them and how you can get currency from it. Let's look further into what you will need to do and what exactly could help you with it. So first and foremost let's talk about how you can get blighted maps in the first place. For that we are going to use a special atlas strategy. First in the favorite slots we need to include the maps that works pretty good with the blight. For the really good blighted maps we need maps with a lot of choking points. For example a really good one would be temple or underground river for example or hunted mansion it's not up there right now. Generally just aim for the one kind of map that has a lot of small places and choking points. So make sure that all your favorited maps are those and it will be much easier to drop those. Talking about the atlas itself, there are a lot of different options how you can approach it. The most important part for every blight strategy would be taking the blight nodes. So the main nodes, it's epidemiology, which gives you additional chances for chests in your maps to contain blighted maps. That way we can raise the chances to get blighted maps in, in the process of running, and we also get lucky drops from the blight chest, which is really good. We also will need to take blight spawn right here because all extractors are good, you can sell them for about 10 chaosas right now. Uh, they can go like to 7 or to 15, that depends on the economy of the current league, but it's always profitable. Also, oils found on your maps have chance to be one tier higher, it really helps with dropping silvers and golds, so try to get it as fast as possible. Distilled fungus bonus right here is pretty important too since you can get one additional blight boss and blight boss gives you a lot of additional rewards. If you are using the scarabs that can buff the bosses as well, it could be a really good synergy. I'm also taking star deconstruction every time even if I have a pretty strong build and I can pretty much clear everything just fine. Because I think star deconstruction will just make the whole fight faster especially when you run them up. Since blight monsters are taking more damage, it will be just easier for your build to kill them, uh, like to one-shot them, and it will speed up the whole process. Otherwise, I can recommend to block everything else, and I'm picking harvest as the main mechanic right here, and I'm trying to run it together with the blight. But you can pretty much run everything else, you can unblock any other mechanics that you like, for example, you can unlock breaches or rituals or ultimatum or delirium or anything else. It will still work great. That way just drop the harvest nodes, chance for harvest and pick whatever you, you like. However, most of the time I like to run blight together with red altars right here. So I'm taking wrath of the cosmos and the light of the dawn together with harvest. We are also blocking Blight, don't be surprised by that, because we are going to use the Scarabs in most cases to spam Blight into the maps. So at the start I will just go for Epidemiology, then for Blight Spawn, and try to get a lot of additional bonuses for maps to just drop one tier higher. It's pretty important, so we will get like more 16 Blight maps instead of 14 or 13 or lower ones. So talking about the map setup, it should be pretty simple too. We are using just the map together with Polish Blighted Scarabs or Rusted Blighted Scarabs. Both of those are pretty good and can work in the most cases. Overall, I definitely recommend to run Polish Blight Scarabs because that way you will, you will be able to receive one additional Blight Boss and if you are taking bonuses for Blight Bosses, it should have a really good synergy. Those Scarabs cost like 2 or 3 Chaoses and are pretty easy to buy in the huge chunks. You can also get Rusted Blight Scarabs for like 1 Chaos, uh, those are a little harder to buy, but overall if you don't have a lot of funds or don't want to risk it, you can run Rusted. 
Most of the time I just run Polished myself. A last option, when you can run Gilded Blight Scarabs instead, just for chance to get one additional reward. This is a good, good bonus, so you can run it too, but most of the time I'm trying to avoid it, because buying Gildeds could be much more harder, especially early in the game, there's not a lot of them, they cost about 6, sometimes even 7 or 8 Chaosas per one. Those are still profitable and I can recommend them, but make sure that you can buy enough. So most of the time I'm just focusing on the Polish Blight Scarabs. That way you can just run maps and pretty much get the Blighted maps pretty often. So talking about the compasses, there's a few different options. You can try to use compass to spawn the Blight, but I don't really think it's necessary and in most cases it's much better to use Scarabs. And you can use the compass for oiling your maps to drop one tier higher. That's a pretty strong bonus. And the compass right now costs about 15 chaoses for 3 uses. That way you will pay about 5 chaoses per one map with the compass. I honestly recommend to use it. And if your budget is alright, you can pretty much use it for every map. And especially it will work great if you will combine it with better scarabs as well, so with Gilded Blighted Scarabs. That way you will have much higher chances to drop good oils while you are running maps. However, if you are trying to avoid higher costs, you can pretty much ignore it all the way. So let's move to a pretty important question. How to buff your Blighted maps for profit? The most basic and conventional part that I'm using myself most of the time should be three reds. That way you're just receiving a lot of blighted chests with lucky rewards inside. That's pretty good. You can just roll it like that and go with it. But there are a few additional options. If you're not sure that your build performs well, you can do two crimson and one ember. For reduced cost of buildings and upgrading towers. That way you can get more good upgrades. I'm pretty sure that even without items you can clear something like that. Only one crimson and two embers. Or three embers. But for profit perfectly, I would say three embers should be an option. Another option would be two crimson right here. And one black. Black gives you chance for black chest to contain an additional reward. That's a pretty good bonus, however, I think it works much better with Blight Ravaged maps. There are also an option to run 3 blacks, but I'm not really into this, even considering that some people really prefer it. There is also an option to run Appalescent, since it pretty much gives the same reward bonus like Crimson Oil, but with bigger numbers. You're receiving only 12 from Crimson, and you're receiving huge 18 from Appalescent. But considering Opalescent costs about 12 Chaosas right now, I don't really recommend to do that. I think it's not really profitable enough and chances to go even or make good profit with it much lower. It's much safer to just go with Crimson or maybe Crimson and one black. If you just don't have any kind of oils and you don't have a lot to pick from, you can always add something else, for example Azure here, it gives the same approach, like the same bonus as Crimson, but the number is even lower. If you don't have Crimson or feel like Crimson are too much for you, you just don't really want to use it, you can go for Azures instead. So perfect combination in my opinion should be 3 Crimson. After your map is anointed right now, you need to go there and pretty much chisel it. Mostly because map item quantity modifiers affect blight chest with 25% of the value, that's good. Then you need to roll it, for example, that bonus is bad. The only thing that you need to avoid is monsters cannot be stunned. That's a really bad bonus. If you run it, your feast towers will be unable to stun enemies properly, and it can ruin the whole run itself. Monster speeds cannot be modified below basic threshold is pretty much a really bad bonus as well, so try to avoid those too. You can also corrupt maps for chances to get higher quantity. 
However, make sure that if you corrupt them, some of them could be failed if you get the bonus, like monsters can be stunned, or monster speed cannot be modified. Yeah, I'm corrupting it, so nice and change. I received monsters can be stunned right here. This is a not really good map right now. It's still possible to run it, but chances to fail it are pretty much higher. So corrupt it at your own risk. Anyway, I myself just trying to corrupt most of them. It's also pretty much recommended to use sacrifices together with your good blighted maps. Because sacrifices can give you additional quality and therefore it can give you more loot from the chests. Most of the time I'm using all four types of sacrifices, but you can use three. You will be able to receive some sacrifices back from the maps itself since blighted maps drops a lot of them. So pretty much with uh, 16th at all right here that was buffed for really good amount of blighted chests with lucky bonus i'm going to use all of the sacrifice bonuses also there's like a really important question that people ask all the time please keep in mind that all your atlas such bonuses as sardi construction or blight spawn do not work in the blight maps so in the blood maps, you're receiving nothing from your atlas. So all your atlas bonuses are there just if you want to run blight in the maps themselves. Since right now, if you want to run blighted maps like that, you don't need any atlas bonuses and you can pretty much run it with empty atlas for the same results. So talking about how profitability is, that's pretty much random. Right now you can see in my inventory the average loot for one map. It's tier 16 buffed with three crimsons. So that's what I have right here. Most of our profitability comes from stack decks. Stack decks right now is around two kelsos per one, so we have almost 20 here, around 36 kelsos from it. We also get, uh, have additional oils, not a big one, so I excluded all the big drops that you can receive, such as Silver Oil, Golden Oil, Iron Lighten, or Cool Divination cards or anything like that. So, most of the time you're receiving your profit from stack decks and from oils if you will receive a lot. You can sell blacks, for example, you for about 4 chaos or 3 chaos. You can sell crimsons if you have a lot, but most of the time I'm using those myself. And you can get a lot of additional bubblegum currency, which should be counted as well. So most of the time, profitability of one map should be around uh, 25 to 50 chaoses, based on the situation. With big drops, it could definitely go much higher. It could drop you like Enlighten, it could drop you like the Doctor, it could drop you pretty much anything. It could drop your all divines as well. But most of the time you still will make a profit every map, it's really stable and do not require anything from you. So stable profit in my opinion like 25 to 60 chaoses, something in between of those two numbers. So there's not a lot of point to do a spreadsheet because loot is really random. If you think that you're receiving not that much or you're not ready to buy maps, you can just run normal maps to receive blighted before you run them. That way you will be able to get them for free. So let's talk about Blighted Ravaged maps. First and foremost, for Blighted Ravaged maps, tier is not important. So tier 14, tier 15 and tier 16 are pretty much the same for Blighted Ravaged. But the monsters still will be, will be level 85, they will have additional life and they will have increased movement speed. For Blighted Ravage maps, you can anoint it 9 times. Overall, I don't really like running those. They're pretty much taking more time than the normal Blighted maps, and all of the approach for them are hit or miss. You can get a lot of really cool drop in them. But it's pretty random, and considering Blighted Ravage I are taking a lot of oils, a lot of preparation, and stuff like that. If you are not hitting this big loot, you can pretty much lose money on them. So make sure that if you are running them, you pretty much know what you are doing. 
since for most of the time I, for example, prefer to just sell them off and run normal blights instead, since those are faster, stable and feels good. However, if you are looking for the blight ravaged maps, I will be able to discuss how to annoy them for most possible profit to have a hit instead of a miss. So when we are talking about anointing blighted ravaged map, we can do it nine times and we need to pretty much focus on maximizing profit. For the first anointment, it's usually really good to pick crimson oils, for blighted chests are lucky. Or instead, if you are really sure that it's going to be alright, you can pick opalescent oils. It will get, give you the same amount of lucky chests, but with more in the pure numbers, so you have 54 instead of 36. It's a pretty good buff, but please consider that Opalus and Toils cost about 10 Chaosas each, so 3 of them will cost you about 30 Chaosas. Most of the time I'm annoyed with Opalus if I don't have a lot of Crimson. So after that, you can also anoint with Black Oil for chance for blight chests to contain an additional reward. That's a pretty good buff since you will open so many lucky chests, additional rewards are working amazingly well. And the last part is pretty tricky. Some people are preferred to use gold for chance for blight chests to contain an additional reward, but I think it's too costly. So, on the other hand, you can use silver for additional quantity right here. Since quantity at the blighted ravaged maps pretty much applied for 50% of it to the blighted chests, it's a pretty good buff. So most of the time I recommend to use at least one silver. If you are sure everything going to be alright, you can use two silvers, but most of the time I'm trying not to go with that. If you already buffed with Opalescent, you can go one silver and two reds, for example. If you are not sure that you will be able to complete the map without issue, you can drop reds and add ember instead. Therefore, you can pretty much go two embers and silver. I'm pretty sure that I can complete it, so I'm going to anoint mine with two reds and one silver. After that, the process is the same, you are chiseling the map, and you are pretty much ouch and go that. You can also corrupt it, but since Blight Ravage are pretty big and you still need to avoid modifiers such as monsters cannot be stunned or monsters cannot be slowed under the basic threshold, I usually prefer not to corrupt them because it can just ruin them. That way I'm just rolling for higher quantity, picking anything that pretty much will be alright and trying to get as many mods as possible. After that, if you hit something like that, you can also corrupt it on top of it. But since I prefer not to do that, that will be pretty much enough. And with the map device itself, you definitely need to use sacrifices. However, if your budget allows you, you can also go and use mortals instead. Some of them could cost about like 10 chaoses, so be really careful with them too. Most of the time I'm just using normal sacrifices. That way we can pretty much have the map just like that and it should work pretty good since we have a lot of quantity, a lot of blight chests that are lucky and chances to get an additional rewards as well. With all of that blighted ravaged maps could be very profitable. But please always remember that it hit or miss and sometimes you can go without a lot of profit in them. So what you would need to run to get a lot of completions for blighted maps itself. First and foremost, you will need to anoint your rings. Right now I have Empower and Anoint right here, which requires specific oils, you can see them on the screen right now. And I have the Meteor Anoint, which requires special oils too. There are a few different options that could be useful as well. But most of the time I just recommend to go with Meteor Bonus for Burning Ground since it does a lot of damage, especially to bosses, and Empowering Bonus, which helps us a lot for stun locking enemies without any issue. That way you can even complete Blighted Maps if your build can do any kind of damage. It could be a little harder, 
but it's still possible. You will naturally fail some, especially if your build can do anything at all, but if you can hold at least one line, it should work pretty good right now. So that's pretty much a classical combination that gives us empowering, gives us cold, feast, and fire. Fire should be upgraded to meteors, everything else should stay at level 3. This combination is strong enough to just hold any enemy, that's tier 16 right here, and as you can see it's pretty much working perfectly, I don't really need to attack. If I can attack, it will be easier for me, but even like that, it's pretty much just enough. Just make sure to upgrade all of your towers right here. So what kind of map you can run when you have no items and your build is really weak? Most of the time I just recommend white blighted maps, but consider you just don't have those. So right now I have like blighted acids, it's like tier 11, it's not white, perfectly it would be, but we are go with acid caverns right here. Yeah, uh, most of the time we are using crimsons and I'm going to get like two annoids of the maps a little later. Right now I'm just going to go with easier part. Since our build is pretty weak, I'm just going to anoint two embers and one crimson. Or even go further and anoint full set of embers. If you have a lot, like, really low builds that don't have any capabilities, you can anoint three embers. It will lower your profit significantly, but it will give you a chance to at least complete the map. Yeah, let's anoint that. After that, we are clicking it with chisels. For example, we can go and see how it will look if I don't have anything on my character. Yeah, let me get rid of all my items right here, except the rings. Yeah, here's my character, it's completely naked, all my items are there, and my panel is empty too. So, talking about strategy, even if you have no items, it should be pretty alright for the most cases. Yeah, let's just look what exactly happens there. And this is pretty much an unlucky teleporter, it's pretty close, but we will be able to build our first line of defense there. Yeah, let's start it up, I don't have any items. As you can see, in the lower tiers, your towers can pretty much do everything by themselves. There are new routes everywhere, but it's pretty much working. Yeah, we can speed up this whole process a little. So right now, I'm using this simple combination. I'm using the level 3 prison towers and the level 3 fist towers. Together with empowering towers and together with our bonus from the ring, empowering towers have 25% increase effect. Those are pretty effective. As you can see, those are so effective, not a single monster will pass. Our purification pump is pretty, pretty strong in most cases, so even if one or two monsters are pretty much going through, that's still completely alright with our build right here. So, that's pretty much what we are doing, we are just building basic, basic options, and that's it, that's it. Since I have no items, and this is like my first take, we can have tougher times with that, but overall, it should be pretty alright in the most cases. As you can see, still no items, I never attacked any of the monsters with my own, like, skills or anything. Uh, I'm just, like, running around, and I'm waiting for my beautiful towers to complete it. So, the most important combination for it is always level 3 freeze and level 3 fist, and level 3 empower. Together, the, this combination pretty much makes it's so easy to just lock monsters down. They can properly move, they can properly go anywhere, and it works really good. 
So that's a pretty basic setup that could be available to any of you at the start of the game and at any particular moment. No item, just two rings and you don't need anything else. The only thing that I would like to comment on, it will be harder in tiers 15 or 16. So if you are going to run something like that, make sure you are picking lower tiers. And also your profit will be lower. Especially if you are picking embers, like a lot of embers. For such a run, I would honestly recommend additional combinations and it should work pretty great too. If you want to speed up this process, you can also do it by adding more towers or going up and attacking monsters yourself, just imagine it. It's possible as well. So, the map is complete and right now we can go and loot it. So, that was my comprehensive Blight Gate. Overall, I think Blight is a pretty good mechanic to farm early in the league. It's not really requires any kind of big investments and it could be completed with almost any build. That way you can stack up currency, prepare to buy cooler items and pretty much progress far. I think it's a perfect mechanic for all people to farm on the first week or even on the second one. I hope you will enjoy it too and receive good drops from it. Thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe to the channel for more content and see you next time.